So hi everybody, I'm Shivam Kalra. I'm a PhD candidate with Professor Tizush at Kimia Lab. I'm also a researcher um, at Huron Digital Pathology. And just before I start even my talk, I should mention that I don't have any formal education in pathology or, or biology since grade 10th, but I love computer science and uh, I love, I've taken all my vision algorithm courses. Um, so this talk could be biased towards more towards computer vision than towards pathology. Um, it's going to be about a, a recent study that I've conducted uh, at Huron Digital Pathology uh, in, search, in search within the uh, WSIs. And this is, I believe, is a, it's a, one of the uh, largest study that has been conducted with more than 2,000 uh, WSIs. In fact, uh, Amir mentioned lots of uh, uh, the previous uh, person who just talked. He mentioned a lot of uh, studies that were recently conducted even by big companies like Google. They have used less than 2,000 WSIs. So um, let's, uh, let's just first start with uh, something that uh, Professor Tizhush has al already been uh, shown, is uh, there are two types of uh, uh, things that you could do with AI in, in, in digital pathology, which is a prediction and a search. So my focus is currently, this particular study that I'm talking is currently focused on search. So why search? It's, uh, it's basically offer some sort of virtual consultation to pathologist. So he could, he could make a query while he's doing his work, and then he would get the similar cases back, and that would already have a diagnosis. So he could utilize the wisdom that is already existing in large archives. That's the idea of search. And AI algorithms could, uh, could, could, could uh, help in making these uh, searching. So I already mentioned this, uh, the pathology consultation is, uh, is, is one of the things that, that has already been conducted and uh, search is sort of a virtual consultation, the consultation with AI agent instead of a real human being. So uh, the, the study that I've done is, uh, is uh, the, it's called Bunch of Barcode. It's basically the indexing that I perform on WSIs, which, uh, which, which is basically, which uh, I, I make, I take the WSIs and make it into a bunch of barcodes, which can be utilized for searching purposes. And it involves a few steps, which first step is a patch selection, which is selecting what is the, uh, what is a good region inside a, a large image which I should index, and then eventually the feature extraction from those regions, and then barcoding them. So I'll explain in more detail. So first is a patch selection. So we have a large, very large WSI, which could be 50,000 by 50,000, and we read through it and we figure out, in an unsupervised way, we figure out what are the different regions that exist. They don't have to uh, correspond to any pathological features, but they're simply from the computer vision perspective, what is the different uh, regions that exist inside a WSI? And we try to uh, do that, it's called region segmentation. So we find, we find uh, nine different regions. Nine is just a magic number that we have used for this study. And from those nine regions, we collect uh, patches or, or uh, the, the patches that, that, uh, that have more impact on those regions that, that identify those regions. Once we have uh, the patches, we give this patches to a pre-trained network, which from which we extract image features for those patches. So this pre-trained network could be, uh, could be any deep, deep network that exists currently, for example, VGG 16, 19, or DenseNet, or or inception net. So we have tried uh, different networks in, in our study. Uh, the reason we are using pre-trained model is, is because one of the previous study that was conducted in our lab, uh, we found that we could, uh, we could just utilize these networks, which is trained on cat and dogs, like the way Professor Tezu said, and we could utilize them to, for pathology images too, and they, they work, they, they have a decent performance if we just utilize a pre-trained network directly without fine tuning or without training it from the scratch. For barcoding, uh, we are utilizing 
uh, the, the the method that exists in literature, uh, it's called min-max algorithm. We utilize this to barcode a feature. The idea of barcoding is uh, when you perform a distance calculation on a barcode, it's much more faster than when you perform it in Euclidean space or a real number space. It's It could be escalated on CPU level in 100 times faster than if you would if you were to calculate Euclidean distances. So we could perform a fast query retrieval for for the for the for the retrieval purposes. So if we add all of these steps, what we end up with is given a 300 or 400 MB of a slide, could be up to 2 GB of a slide, we get around index which is of uh, 10 to 15 KB. And this is the index, which is bunch of barcodes, like I said. It's basically just a bunch of barcodes. This is the index that we could utilize to search in a scan, a full a scan with the full in its entirety. So to validate this study, this is, uh, this is one of its kind studies, so we had to come up with some sort of validation scheme for, for our study. And for validation, we have used two data sets. One is a sort of private data set, which uh, my company, Huron Digital, had, had uh, already available from UPMC. It consists of 300 uh, WSIs with, uh, from different uh, primary sites and different uh, diseases. And the next uh, the testing data set that we have utilized is the publicly available data set, which many of the studies, recent studies have used. It's called TCGA. Uh, we, we selected around 2,000 WSIs from this particular data set. We grabbed it randomly. So we have a nice distribution of uh, diseases and primary sites. What we did is uh, we indexed everything, all 2,300 scans from two data sets, and we performed search across every, everywhere, so horizontal search across all primary sites, across entire data set. There was no training. We just used uh, pre-trained networks. And for any given WSIs, whatever attribute it had, primary site or primary diagnosis, we were trying to find a result if it could match what we searched for. So if we search for a lung, do we find lung back? If we search for some sort of adenocarcinoma, do we get the same sort of adenocarcinoma back? This was, uh, this was our criteria for, for validating it. This was just one of the criteria for validating it. This is pretty harsh because sometimes they could, they could have some sort of uh, 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 histological meaning, even though the lung is not equivalent to lung if you, if you search it, but they could still have some sort of histological meaning to it, which our study simply says, uh, simply denies it. It just, it's, so it's a harsh validation. What we found is if, uh, this is the result that we got in 2300 uh, data set, and we found that if we just, our first match itself is 92% uh, accurate, so if we search for a primary site, we get 92% accurate that we'll, we'll fetch the same primary site as a first result. And similarly, the, we have the second and third. This is a second match means all both of them are supposed to be what we, we, we looked for. And third is so on. So this is just some examples. This is for the, for the, this is the disease that we searched for. And we did the search inside the, this particular gland only, adenoid gland. And we, f we found all three of them that were searched had the same disease as what we queried. And this is more, this is for the brain. We found that the brain was very easy. It, we were always accurate. If we search some, some sort of disease of a brain, we always get the same disease back as our search results. This is one fail case where we f where our search result failed for the third, third uh, third result, so we searched for lung adenocarcinoma, but we got uh, the other, we got lung squamous cell carcinoma back, so we had discrepancy there, even though there could be some sort of uh, histological meaning to it, but uh, we didn't, we just specified it to be a wrong class, a wrong result. We also did, uh, we also did validation in terms of how many correct retrievals do we get. So if we search for just one scan, do how many do we get which are correct? So the, the x-axis shows our number of queries that we made. And the green 
actually shows how many uh, correct results we got. So for for this particular case, which is a lung, we if we search for lung, at the tenth, if we search for ten, we almost get uh, around five point five, which is the expected value. We get around five lung cases in those ten retrievals, and the red graph is showing what if we were to supposed to just do a random pick inside our data set. So clearly, we have a high discrepancy between our systematic search versus a random retrieval. Same for the for the brain. So if we search for brain, we, we were getting around three brains in a horizontal search. And again, the random is very low, which is random is, in fact, just zero. The next validation study that we conducted is, uh, is the expert's opinion. We asked a pathologist to rate our search results. And what we did is we presented the pathologist with this kind of a web page where there is a query image, and there is three results back. And we, we sorted them in any order. And pathologist is, is marking which one is good, which one is bad. And what we, wanna, what we wanna find out is whether pathologist's opinion is matching with our internal assessment in terms of distances that we calculate through the computer vision algorithm. Is it matching with, is it positively correlating with the assessment of pathologist? So, what we found is it does. So um, you can see that whenever pathologist said something very bad, the result, search result is bad, the distance that is used by our search engine was higher. And whenever he said great, the distance that was, uh, was, uh, was perceived by our algorithm was, was much lesser. It's a hamming distance between barcodes. And the question was, how do you compute distance? It's uh, so every patch is uh, is a barcode, and we could just simply do the Hamming distance, which is how many blip bits needs to be flipped in order to make one barcode to another barcode. That becomes our distance. A follow-up question would be, uh, when you design the barcode, is it row-wise? Uh, you you take a patch and uh, see the intensity of that. As what is the value in that barcode? So we extract the feature, and then we use uh, a hashing technique called min-max algorithm, which uh, I gave the citation, the reference for. We no. just use that technique to con convert it into a barcode. So the min-max operates on the intensity of the, of the yes. image. Yes, it, it, it operates on the real, real values features. Yeah. Uh, this this uh, table shows uh, the, the response of a pathologist. I sorted them in the, in the systematic manner. So Whatever was the Q1 here refers to the first result, which is the best result for our search algorithm. So you can see the highest number of greens. Green is, by the way, positive correlation or a good response from a pathologist side. And you can say that the majority of reds or even the light reds or grays exist in Q3. The highest number of grades or agreements exist in Q1. We also did a rank correlation. Uh, how how well does the pathologist response, if we were to suppose put ordering to it, how well does it uh, correlate with the ordering of of our intern of of our algorithm? The next that we conducted was uh, the classification. Uh, searching is not really classification, but one way to validate searching whether searching is good or not. We can try to classify it, and if the classification accuracy is good, then searching is also looking at the, the correct semantic features. So we did, uh, so this is a confusion matrix of uh, classifying two of the brain diseases that exist in TCGA, brain lower uh, grade glioma and glioblastoma, and we can find that it's making a good prediction. So the, the true, true, truth is, is always green. So just a summary, Search is a pathologic-centric AI approach. It's uh, assistance to a pathologist, then replacing him altogether or her altogether. And barcode and mosaicing reduce the index size by 70%, which is one of its kind of, of study, without loss of any accuracy. Pre-trained networks offer decent image characterization for pathology images, so we don't have to train every, every time we train something, we don't have to start from scratch. And more the data, we, the better the search results are, because 
there is higher chances that you would hit something correct if you have a larger amount of data. And that's it. Thank you.